Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's been a while, but welcome back to Tom Talks. On today's episode, we are going to talk about this super rare and very special Ferrari that I have behind me. Now, as you all may be aware, I am particularly fond of a Ferrari 275 GTB. I love short nose GTBs, GTB4s, two cams, four cams, three carburettors, six carburettors. And in my career to date, I've probably bought and sold and owned more than 50 different examples. However, the cars that are super special of that series are the Competitionis. And only 12 of those cars were built. And this is one of them. Now, in 1965, Ferrari decided to tweak their short nose GTBs for, their, for some of their privateers to go racing. They fitted them with an aluminium body, they put six carburettors on them, they made some beautiful slots in the rear fenders, they put a nice big outside fuel filler on, but those cars today are not recognized by Ferrari as competition cars. The cars that are recognized as competition cars is the 1966 series GTBs, the long nose, of which this is one, and they only built 12 such examples. And of those 12 cars, only four of them were ever constructed in right-hand drive configuration. Now let's have a closer look and let me chat with you about the differences between the Competizione cars and the normal GTBs. The first thing that we notice are the outside laced wire wheels. The normal Barani wire wheels on a GTB sit much further back. You then have the joint lines in the aluminium body and another telltale sign from a long distance away uh, on an alloy body GTB is the extended chrome trim. So when you're driving by or when you're seeing a car from 20 feet away, you're not going to notice the joint lines, but you might notice the, uh, the lengthened aluminium trim. Now, speaking of the aluminium body, these Competizione cars, these 12 cars were constructed with 20 gauge aluminium. That's about half the thickness, half the thickness of the normal alloy body on a GTB. All the glass that was fitted to the normal GTB was swapped out for Perspex, plexiglass, in the Competizione cars. The seats were constructed, the frames were constructed out of a lightweight, lighter weight configuration, and they were bolted directly to the aluminium floors, of which the normal GTB were not fitted with aluminium floors. All of these cars, all of the 12 examples of the Competizione's were constructed, built, designed, messed around with in the racing department of Ferrari. These were the last cars that were ever built in the racing department of Ferrari and they were built to go racing. Now, speaking of them going racing, the really big difference is underneath the bonnet. So let's take a look. Now, the first thing that I notice is how light the bonnet is. It's like paperweight, it's so thin it's scary because I think if we breathe on it a little bit too heavy, we'll probably dent it. And then other interesting um, changes that the racing department implemented were the drilled frames in the bonnet, the boot and both doors, seriously lightening the car. But the really, really big difference, and for me, <laughs> it's where the similarities absolutely end on a 275 GTB is underneath the bonnet. Now, these cars have a dry sump lubricated engine. It has the separate oil catch tank that's fitted underneath the wing to the opposite side of the steering column. So if a car is left-hand drive, it's fitted on a right-hand drive and vice versa. They're fitted with a 140 litre fuel tank. They're fitted with special pistons. The compression ratio of the engine is uprated from 921 to 931, it produces nearly 300 brake horsepower. It has special crankshaft. It has a magnesium 
encased camshaft covers. It has the most beautiful Tripper Weber carburetor assembly and with these sculpted uh, velocity stacks that are facing rearward that are absolutely unique to the model. There's so many things about th this particular series of 275 that is just unique to the model, whether it be the, um, the carburetors, the velocity stack, the, um, the uh, dry sump lubricated engine, you have the, this car has a, on the transaxle, it has a magnesium case transaxle, close ratio gearbox. This is how they were all built from the factory. Different exhaust system. It really is a very, it's oil cooler in front of the radiator. It's just a very different car to a normal 275 GTB. And now the most exciting and enjoyable part of filming this episode is we're gonna take it for a drive. and at low speeds you get a sense for what a different animal we're dealing with here unless you spent a lot of time driving a 275 GTB or GTB4 you might not truly appreciate the difference but the car feels so much more connected so much more responsive it's kind of like jumping in a racing car today actually where you feel like it's highly tuned ready to go campaigning. Brakes are very good and has bundles more power. Oh my, just listen to that. Whoa. Now, we've touched on the model. We've spoken about why a GTBC is important. They, they were all built really to go racing. You know, these cars, Ferrari built in their racing department. They won the class at Le Mans in 66. They also came second in 66. Another car went back in 67 and won the class at Le Mans yet again. They competed for many, many years, hill climbs, circuit racing, and were super successful. But this particular car can claim such originality can claim the title of being the most original of all 12 GTBCs, as it was never campaigned. It was a road car from new. Interestingly, the very first owner was a gentleman in Long Island, New York, a guy called Marvin Weinman. And Marvin Weinman invented the elastic band that kept the pantyhose on. He was also known for having very good taste and want in the latest and greatest of the automobile world. Now, a lot of you may be thinking, that's weird. The first owner of that right-hand drive Ferrari was based in Long Island, New York. What the hell? Well, you must remember that up to the late 50s, early 60s, all Ferrari competition works cars were right-hand drive as the majority of circuits that they were raced upon were clockwise circuits and Ferrari and many other manufacturers felt that a right-hand drive car was a better car for a clockwise circuit for obvious reasons. Now, Mr. Weinman would go on, go on to own the car for a few years before it being passed, being sold to a gentleman called Dyke Ridgely. Now, a lot of you may not know who Dyke Ridgely is, but Dyke is a, a, a lovely man, a guy that I've got to know over the last, I don't know, 15 years in North America. When he bought this car, he was the president of the Ferrari Owners Club in North America. And he would later go on, and I would give him the title of being the leading authority on the Ferrari 275. A lot of it to do, was to do with the fact that he owned this car and um, the study that he put into the model. But 
Dyke, who wrote for Cavallino, the president of the Ferrari Owners Club, super knowledgeable guy. And when he bought this car, he spoke about how original it was and how he wanted to preserve the car and how it was always protected from period of racing, which meant today the reason in why the car was so original. Following Dyke's ownership, the car was purchased by well-respected and highly regarded collector Brandon Wang. And Brandon purchased the car at Brandon's known for his taste in original cars and his desire to buy super preserved cars. And he kept the car until he purchased his 250 GTO, which he still owns to this day. And yes, we have tried to buy it from him and no, he won't sell it. Now, following Brandon's ownership, the car passed to legendary collector, Lord Anthony Bamford. Now, I'm not sure there's been any important Ferrari in existence that hasn't passed through Lord Anthony's hands. You know, this is a guy that's been collecting cars since the very early 60s, still collecting great Ferraris today. And we spoke about this car recently, and I get the sense that it's one particular Ferrari that he regretted selling. Anyway, the car would pass from Anthony to another well-known and well-respected UK-based Ferrari collector who we purchased the car from in 2018. We subsequently sold the car to a very good client and as part of the deal, we were and did manage the restoration but sent the car back to Ferrari Classique as the owner wanted the car restored, being as original as what it was, he wanted the car restored back at the factory. And the remit that Ferrari were given, and the remit that Ferrari respected and actually really wanted to do themselves, was to preserve the full original body. And I, I was I have to say, amazingly surprised when we stripped the car, stripped the paintwork back to the bare metal to see how original and how good of condition the car was in. Maybe that's something to do with spending most of its life in a very warm climate, and maybe it also had something to do with it being always loved and cherished and cared for and low mileage and not campaigned and no accidents. But the body was the same body that left Scaglietti back in 1966. And it was literally stripped, stripped back to that bare metal and restored from that with virtually zero metal replaced. Following completion of the restoration, the car was entered into the Salon Privé Concorde the Elegance in 2022 and was entered into the Ferrari competition class. Now we were particularly excited because we thought, okay, great, this car's fabulous. But then we saw the entry list. 250 GTO, freshly restored, a, a very special prototype, you know, the most amazing list because it was celebrating 70 years of Ferrari it was the most amazing list of entries at Salon Privé last year and at that point I have to be honest I was a tiny bit worried there was also another freshly restored 9000 series 275 GTBC a sister car to this another right hand drive car so it had tough competition but as a testament to the fabulous work that Ferrari carried out, and maybe a testament to a little bit of our management, the car scooped top awards. It came away with first in class, winner, winner, chicken dinner, and we scooped all the trophies. 
So in summary, one of only 12 Competizione cars ever produced. The model was produced to go racing, to win, of which it did do. This particular car is, it is regarded and it is the most original example in existence. It has been perfectly restored. You should never use the word perfectly because nothing in life is perfect, apart from this, because this is bloody perfect. Perfectly restored by Ferrari Classic A. It's an award winner. It's been owned by the who's who of the Ferrari collector community over the last 50 years. And we're just about to launch it for sale. But before we do, I'm not going home for a few hours. I'm having some fun in the GTBC 